Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to look at equations and systems of equations in more than one variable. Now, if you remember from a previous video, we've defined what we meant by an equation, which is a statement that two algebraic expressions are equal, and we've looked at equations with one variable in them, say only an x, and talked about what is meant by a solution. A solution is a number which, when you substitute it for that variable, it makes the equation true. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about equations in one variable, but we're also going to allow ourselves to look at equations in more than one variable. Maybe two variables, like an x and a y. When we have a situation like that, the concept of a solution has to be fine-tuned a little bit. You have to have uh, if you have a solution, uh, excuse me, if you're looking at a solution of an equation in two variables, you're going to need a pair of numbers. A pair, one value for x, one value for y, for example. A pair of numbers that when you substitute for the variables, the equation is true. A solution of an equation in two variables is a pair of numbers that when substituted for the variables makes the equation true. Let's look at an example of an equation that has two variables in it. So here's an equation, and unlike some of the others we've looked at, there is both an x and a y. So to make that equation true, I'd have to have a value of x and y. And the way we usually communicate that is to put those values into a pair called an ordered pair. So that might look something like this. And we're going to show that this pair of numbers is a solution to that equation. Now this again is called an ordered pair. What we mean by that is the first number is going to represent a value we can substitute for x, and the second number is going to represent a value we can substitute for y. Let's see what happens if we substitute or plug in or drop in the box a 4 for the x and a 2 for the y. If this is a solution, then that will equal 2. Put a little question mark here to indicate whether it's true or not. Let's check that out. So 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 2 is 10. Is 12 minus 10 equal to 2? Yes. Yes, it is. So 4, 2 is the solution of that equation. Let's look at another ordered pair. Same equation, but just a different ordered pair. Show that the ordered pair 9, 5 is a solution also. Well, that's interesting because equations in one variable often don't have a lot of solutions. Let's see what happens here. So if I substitute the 9 for the x and the 5 for the y, does that equal 2? Put a little question mark right here. And let's check that one out. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 minus 20, 5 times 5 is 25, 27 minus 25 is 2, great. So that's the solution as well. So this equation has at least two solutions, and what we're going to discover over the next few days is that most equations in two variables have infinitely many solutions infinitely many. Now that's not to imply that every ordered pair is a solution, but that there are infinitely many that are. For example, I, let's see if we can show that if we looked at the ordered pair 1, 3, that is not a solution. Now what that would mean is we would be plugging in a 1 for the x. Again, we're going back to this same equation over and over and over again. 3 times 1 minus 5 times 3. Is that equal to 2? Well, let's check that out. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Is 3 minus 15 equal to 2? No, that's not true. 
So there are infinitely many solutions, but that doesn't imply that every ordered pair is a solution. Now this particular equation is of a certain type that's going to be important to us. We're going to say that it is a linear equation. And we remember looking at linear equations in one variable. A linear equation in two variables is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus by equals c, where the a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are not equal to zero. So this would fit that category. The value of either a or b can be negative. That's how we would get this negative 5y into the picture. All right. Before we leave this, what, let's explore what an equation would look like that is not linear. So let's clear that out. And here's a perfectly good equation, but this equation is not linear. And this will help you see. The equation I'm thinking of is x squared plus y equals 4. There's no way that that can be written simply as ax plus by equals c because of the square. So if there's a square on one of the variables, that's not linear. Nothing wrong with it, it's just not linear. The idea of a solution still works though. So in this equation, let's see if we can show that the ordered pair 1, 3 is a solution to that equation. And the idea will be similar to above. If we substitute the 1 for the x and the 3 for the y, is that indeed equal to 4? We'll put a little question mark there. And I think you can see this is no problem. 1 plus 3 equal 4. That's a solution. All right. Equations in, in more than one variable, two variables, mainly what we're looking at right now, and the concept of a solution. Now here's the next concept we want to look at. It's called a system of equations. A system of equations is just a collection of two or more equations. And when you have a system of equations and you use the word solution, a solution of a system of equations is a pair of numbers which when substituted for the variables makes all of the equations true. So let me look at an example of this. Here's an example of a system of equations. There's going to be two equations in two variables. 3x minus 5y equal 2 and 2x minus 3y equals 3. That's a system of equations. And I want to show that the ordered pair uh, 9, 5 is a solution of this system. And that simply means we're going to plug in 9 for x and 5 for y in both of these equations like this. So 3 times 9 minus 5 times 5. We need to know, is that going to be equal to 2? Plugging it into the first equation. And then in the second equation is 2 times 9 minus 3 times 5. Is that equal to 3? And we'll put a question mark here too because we're checking that out. Let's see. Both equations have to be true. Let's look at the top one. Actually, you may remember the, some of these numbers. Uh, 3 times 9 is 27. 5 times 5 is 25. Is 27 minus 25 equal to 2? Yes. Good. But that's not good enough. It has to be a solution of both equations. Let's look at the second one. So 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 5 is 15. Is 18 minus 15 equal to 3? Yes. That ordered pair makes both equations true. That's a solution of the system. Now, much like when we first looked at equations in one variable, we're just sort of picking things out of the air and checking. Obviously, that's pretty inefficient. So we're going to look at a system, or, or some procedures whereby we can find these solutions. And the magic word we're going to use is solving. To solve an equation, to solve a system of equations, is to find all of its solutions. So find a way to figure out that 9, 5 was an ordered pair that was going to work. 
Now, we've looked so far at systems of equations in two variables. You can have systems of equations in three variables, four variables, however many you want. You have to be a solution, you'll have to have a value for x, y, and z in, in this case. And much like an ordered pair, we would have an ordered triple, and the values of these variables um, are sort of taken in alphabetical order. So the three is going to represent a value to substitute for x. The four is going to represent a value to substitute for y. And the five is going to represent a value to substitute for z. Let's see if when I substitute these values into all of these equations, whether they all turn out true. Let's see. So I'm going to kind of stay color coded here, color coded here. Uh, X, let's look at the top equation. We'd have three plus two times four minus five. And the question is, is that equal to six? So we'll check that out. And then below that, substituting in the three for x and the four for y and the five for z, would that be equal to negative one? Would that make that equation true? And then finally at the end uh, is three times three minus four times four plus three times five is that equal to three? So you see I'm, I've replaced all my x's with three, all my y's with four, all my z's with five, and we're gonna check out whether this works. So looking at the top equation and simplifying, we'd have three plus eight minus five. Is that equal to six? Let's see, three plus eight is 11 minus five equals six. So yes, that turns out just fine. Look at the second equation. Two times three is six. Three times four is 12 plus five. Is that equal to negative one? Well, six minus 12 would be negative six. Negative six plus five equals negative one. Yes, that's good too. And finally, three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. Uh, three times five is 15 is nine minus 16 plus 15 going to equal to three. And nine minus 16 is negative seven plus 15, oh, is equal to eight. Oh, shoot. So you know what that means? Everything was great on the first two equations, that's wonderful, but the, pair, the, the triple of numbers has to work in all three equations and it did not work in the last one. That's enough to cause a problem. So guess what? We have just shown that three, four, five is in fact not a solution of the system. How disappointing. Well, clearly we're gonna to have to come up with some methods for finding these solutions so we're not just guessing and checking because that just does not seem to work all that well. All right, we'll do that in the next video.